Hello and welcome to Spirit Forest. This is part of my Viking series videos that we are going to do today. I have Madison dressed up in the outfit that I talked about in my previous Viking video. Um, if you want to see it, click here. And it talks about um, her outfit and talks about the outfits of the Viking Age. Now, um, my little disclaimer is that um, I am not a Vi Viking expert. I am researching this and filming kind of at the same time. So, um, you know, so I will link to all my information on the links below in, in the description. So you'll be able to ch check that out to see where I'm getting my information. So what we, today we have Madison's gonna be the, the beautiful hairstylist and she's gonna braid our hair like the Vikings. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, Vikings and how their hair was, uh, Viking hygiene, um, how they brushed their hair, and just the history that I have found online um, regarding the Vikings. Although the popular image of the people of Viking age was a wild haired dirty savages, this is actually a false perception. In reality, the Vikings took care um, with their personal grooming, bathing, and hairstyling. Combs of wood or bone were amongst the most common findings from the Viking period. The Vikings often kept such combs and boxes to protect them, so they must have been important to them. Makeup can also be added to the list of beauty items. The Spanish Arab who visited around the year of 1000 described both men and women in the town wore makeup to look younger and more attractive. The Viking males were apparently clean because they didn't have any problem getting to women in England. They were pleasant smelling and they took a bath on Saturdays. They combed their hair and they were well dressed. In 922 AD, a traveler wrote and describes how slave women came in every morning with a bowl of water for their master, who washed his hands, hair, and face in the water and then blew his nose. When he had finished, the slave took the bowl of water around to others who did the same. He could tell that he came from a culture in which personal hygiene had a high priority. There are many readings that I read online that talked about um, the cleanliness of the Viking. The English sources describe the Vikings as immensely attractive in the eyes of the English noble woman because they took a bath every Saturday. This may be true because the word Saturday in Dutch means wash day. Beards were also well groomed by the men, and this can be seen in a lot of the ship barrels in Norway. The males have a long, elegant mustache and beard. The Viking women's hair were also well cut. It was typically long and could be attractively styled. We can see this on the small silver blonde figures and a lot of the jewelry that they keep. You might ask what color the hair was of the Vikings. It was either red or blonde. Genetic research has so shown that the Vikings in West Scandinavia and therefore in Denmark were mostly red-haired. However, in North Scandinavia, in the area of Stockholm, blonde hair was more dominant. I also read online um, that women wanted their hair to be blonde and they found ways to bleach it as well. Since we are women on this channel, I feel that it's appropriate for us to talk about the women hairstyles as Madison is behind me and styling Kyla's hair. Women's hairstyles seem to have been more limited during the Viking Age than men's hairstyles based on the surviving evidence. One scholar suggests that blonde hair was most prized and the brunette woman could bleach her hair using some of the same method as the Celtics. So to bleach the hair, uh, they would use strong, strongly basic soap, which was made and applied to the hair with a bleaching action provided by the lye resulting in red or red gold hair color. Sorry about the squirrel in the background. But that seems to be the story here at the tent is the squirrel share with us. <laughs> oh, okay, so let's talk about the married women. Married women usually wore their hair gathered into a knot at the back of the head or coiled atop the head in the arrangement that often covered their hair with a cap or veil. Several sources indicate that it was mandatory for the Norse women who were married wear, to wear head covering. However, actual archaeology doesn't seem to support this belief. Many of the 9th and 10th century women burials show no head coverings at all let alone graves from other locations, although fine, fine headwear are more common in the Christianized areas like Dublin. 
Unmarried girls would wear their hair long and loose. At times, they may have worn their hair in braids instead. Thrall women, as their male counterparts, were required to wear their hair cropped short as a sign for their servitude. Anglo-Viking women apparently wore a variety of hairstyles. Two hog-type stones. They wore their hair in two braids, falling on either side of the head beside the cheek. It was thought that the early Anglo-Viking women probably did not wear a headdress, but by the end of the period where they adopted fashions from the neighboring Christian Anglo-Saxon women, for instance, the 10th century silk hood and linen ties recovered. I first want to thank Madison for doing all our hair, and look how beautiful she looks in my Viking outfit. And Kyla, she's wearing my little cloak. <laughs> my beautiful girls. So uh, thanks again for watching. Um, again, this is part of a Viking series, so hopefully you get the chance to watch them all. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.